today we're going to talk about what well, not GDB per se but how we build applications for best use inside GDB. I think it's safe to assume we all know about the dash G option so you compile with dash G and that generates the debug info that GDB needs to tell you what your program is doing. But let's just talk a little bit about how dash G and dash O for optimizations interact. So the first thing you need to understand is they are completely orthogonal things. Specifying dash G means the compiler will generate debug information and put that in its own section in your executable or your object file. Um, and it does not affect the code that's generated at all, right? Now dash big O does the opposite. It affects the generated code obviously, uh, but it does nothing with the debug information, right? So in particular, if you're worried that adding dash G might slow down your program, well, don't be, right? Dash G will make your binaries a bit larger on disk and, and that's it. When you're running the application, the code will be exactly the same and the OS won't even page in that debug info from, from disk into memory, right? But of course, when you compile with optimizations, can and often does like adversely affect your debug experience. So let's let's show a little example. I think we've probably all seen something um, similar to this. So here's a, a tiny little program uh, that I'm going to compile with a bit of optimization enabled. I'm going to do dash G to get my debug information. Okay, we run it like that. Now I'm going to run it inside GDB. Uh, uh, all good. Now if I try to print the value of foo. Uh, yes, seen that before? Probably have, right? Very annoying. Um, partly, actually, it's this message is somewhat misleading because you'd certainly be forgiven for thinking that that means the compiler's been super clever and the value of foo now doesn't exist uh, at all in your program. It's been kind of completely optimized away. Now, sometimes that can be the case, right? Sometimes it can work out this is some kind of intermediate value, it's not needed. Um, but often what it means is variable foo is not actually live at this point, even though sort of notionally it's in scope now, at the beginning of line seven, you know, we, it, it hasn't bothered to sort of allocate space for it or anything. So if I type next and now try to look at foo, voila, there it is, right? So um, what's going on here? Well, when we say dash G, we're actually uh, generating dwarf information, right? Um, there is some kind of um, backronym, like I'm debugging with uh, attributes and something, but it's that's a that's a backronym. In fact, it's a sort of the, the name dwarf is a pun on elf. Um, so elf is is does is a is a real um, acronym for uh, some execution and linking format. Can't even remember, but anyway, dwarfs go with elves, um, and and um, all you need to know is it's a bunch of bunch of information generated by the compiler that the debugger can parse to understand. What your program is doing now at the simplest level uh it will just give you giving a program counter the dwarf information will be able to tell you uh, what line of source code you're at so when you hit so when gdb hits a breakpoint it can look at the program counter and map that back to the dwarf information let's have a look um at what that looks like so we can use the read elf utility uh to look at um so if i go um i think it's debug dump um my program Oops. Okay, so so this is a sort of debug uh, dump version of the, of the dwarf info, right? In a dot out, and I can search for my variable foo that I had, and here it is, right? So the dwarf information is basically a tree, um, and um, the details are sort of somewhat uninteresting, but it's good just to show a little bit of this. So foo, um, you can see here that it's um, declared in the file number one, and elsewhere that will be optimized dot c at line seven. Um, okay, column nine, and it's got this type information, which can tell us actually it's an int, and it's got some more, this location list, right? And this location list tells us uh, where uh, the where the thing is, where, where the where the variable is live. And can go um, if I go like that, it'll do just the location list. And uh, if you remember, it was location A, location list A. So here's the start of location list A, and actually it's a list. You can see here. Uh, a list of places where this variable is live and what it tells me is that this program counter offset um, it's live in register RAX. It doesn't exist in memory, right? There's no address to look at but you can just say it's in the register from this point. And then it's in the register RAX actually added one to it then it goes into RDX and it flows through my program and pops out in the return statement in, in, in RAX. So 
when my program was stopped at the beginning, it was before this address 1074. So if I look at that again, remember 1074, start, print foo, foo is optimized out. Program counter is here. When I go next, and now I look at my program counter, I can see it is at this offset one. And these are these are offsets within the page, so it says offset 1074 within that within that section. Um, and now the variable becomes live. So anyway, come we will be in there, optimized out, doesn't necessarily mean it's not there. Sometimes you can step next a few times. If you have you if you have uh, reversible capabilities, you can sometimes back up to where the variable is live, or or, or very useful. But but nice to know how this stuff plumps together. Now uh, worth knowing though that, that that dash g is not um is, is not the only uh, 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 option you can specify in fact there's all kinds of complex things that you, that you can specify to gcc or to clang about how it's going to follow uh, 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 optimized um, data through and and actually you can you, the default dash g is dash g2 but i can say gcc oh, just type it dash g3 three is the highest um, and 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 that will generate more um, debug information it's going to make my binaries even larger but otherwise not affect the code of course um, and and this it just generally I think gives you a better experience it turns on a whole but it turns on basically everything it can do and and is likely to give you a better experience when debugging optimized code later compilers um, will give you a better experience as well there are different versions of dwarf and um, the default for modern versions of GCC is to generate dwarf four older versions if you're building on an older system often people build on old systems in order to guarantee their resulting application will run um, on, on old systems um, and so that might have an old compiler and it will um, do a less good job and it and if it's if it's say on a rel 6 it's going to generate dwarf 3 um, by default um, which is just going to be you know, it's going to be a whole bunch of stuff it can't capture and you're going to see more of those optimized out type annoyances when you're debugging um, with that with uh, modern GCCs by default will generate dwarf 4 which is richer but still with dash g2 dash g3 will give us more stuff including things like macros um, which I can see um, so if I go uh, let's just like quickly I'm going to do the simplest thing I can think of but define uh, val 42 int main void uh, return val like that so if I go gcc dash g macro and then I load that up print val doesn't exist right it's a macro it's a pre it's in the preprocessor the compiler's never even seen it but do that Ta -da. okay and you can actually um, have macros that you know manipulate you know bit fields and 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 whatever you want to do so so that's um, um, but that's just one of the things dash g3 turns on it it turns on basically you know everything the component can do and will give you generally a much better uh, experience when debugging uh, our optimized code um, on the um, optimization levels you know still it's not going to be perfect right sometimes information is just gone there's only so much the compiler uh, can do you can specify dash o g um, and that will turn on enough optimization um, to sort of make things go reasonably so if you if you go with dash o zero it really is like no optimization every single time it references a a, a variable it's going to it's going to load that from memory into a register do something and then store it back again when it's finished um, this really is sort of dumb as you could imagine uh, and and so things will often run a lot no inlining anything like that dash og it's going to inline some stuff it's going to you know elide some of those accesses to memory um, but it's not going to do anything sort of super crazy like you know, i don't know unrolling loops or something such that the debugger can't so it'll give you a good debug experience um and pretty a pretty fast code um so that's often th those, those two options dash g3 and dash og often give you a nice kind of balance of of, of code that runs with reasonable performance and yet is uh, nicely debuggable um, to be honest that's that's kind of all you need to know right so just to recap the point is dash g anything is not going to affect the code you run your program is going to run at full speed um, dash g3 is generally i would recommend it okay unless you're really sensitive to how big your binaries are on disk um, there's not really any reason not to throw on dash g3 um, and, uh, and and we've got um, 
you know, dash O. Now you might, you may well not want dash OG because you're very performance sensitive, and that's fine. The more, the more optimizations you ask the compiler to do, this, the, 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 you know, the more thinking you're likely to have to do when you, when you debug your program. Um, so that's that's really it for, um, for this. Um, uh, just some small things, but hopefully that's that's useful. Um, do sign up to uh, the, the the mailing list to get these as they come out every every few weeks or so. And otherwise, we'll see you at the next one. Bye bye.